Hi, my name is Natalie Martinez, and I will be presenting on legal resources in Dallas County area. But first, I want to go over some safety some safety measures to keep in mind while you're watching this. Um, be sure that you're watching this in a safe place where only safe people can hear it. Remember to clear your browser history after watching this video in case someone monitors your phone or computer. Also, we recommend using headphones to secure that no one else can hear what you're watching. If you leave any comments on YouTube, remember that other people can see that you have commented. If you are in a situation that you need help with emergency safety planning or need assistance with a domestic violence shelter, please call our hotline number on the screen. And if you wanna sign up for counseling or services, you can call our main phone number on the screen as well. So I'm gonna get started talking about legal resources in the Dallas County area. There are a lot of different legal needs for our clients, so I have them broken down by categories. Um, the information that I'm gonna to provide to you today is mainly for the Dallas area. There are different legal services in different counties and different cities, and I have more information on that, so if that if you need information on different counties, you know, please contact me directly. I'm going to include my contact information at the end of this presentation. So I have the information broken down in categories by family law or civil law, also immigration law, protective orders, and other legal resources. For family law, um, Legal Aid of Northwest Texas um, is downtown and their address is on the screen. They are income based. That means that they serve, <clears throat> excuse me, they serve um, people that are under um, a certain income bracket. So they, they will ask you for your income information and they'll ask you about um, assets and those kinds of things uh, for you to qualify for their free legal services. They provide all kinds of legal services in their main office. However, we have two um, attorney, family law attorneys that are able to, to meet with our clients on a weekly basis for an intake. If you would like to meet with them for an intake, please let your advocate know myself or another outreach advocate or if you're at the shelter or at Annie's house, they can also connect you with legal aid. Um, but that is our main number for Legal Aid of Northwest Texas. I also have included Community Layering Center um, with the UNT Legal Clinic. They have two different locations and they also follow Legal Aid of Northwest Texas income brackets. It's free legal services through the law school. So what you have is professors and students working on the legal case together. It's free legal services and they have family law attorneys and they have um, different kinds of attorneys that can help with like housing, or different um, eviction services or different civil cases that you might need assistance with. Um, so that's the phone number to call to set up an appointment. Um, I also have City Square Law Center. City, City Square Law Center is, is downtown and they are sliding scale or pro bono low income services. They do charge $25 for the first time consult fee. They have family law attorneys and other attorneys as well on their team. So that's the phone number to get connected with them. And that's their address. And sometimes if they have too many cases, they might put you on a waiting list or they might ask you to call back some 
um, at a later date um, because they don't have enough attorneys to staff, staff all of the cases. Because of COVID, I will keep in mind that a lot of these places are not um, doing in-person meetings for your safety, for their safety as well. Um, and so you can give them a call and some of them are doing phone appointments and then some are doing video call appointments, whatever you're more comfortable with, but it is a safety precautions they're taking, but I'm happy that they're still able to meet with clients and they're still able to represent clients during this time. Um, they're just doing it taking precautions because of COVID. Um, I also included Mosaic Family Services. So Mosaic Family Services is a nonprofit that helps victims of domestic violence or human trafficking victims. They have a shelter and an outreach office as well. And they have two, two attorneys, a family law attorney and an immigration attorney. So if you need assistance with any of that, they they also provide that and their agency um, for free, free of cost. And you can call that phone number. They do have a two-step process, which is first you meet with a case manager and then they will refer you to their legal department. Um, they are expanded to, to Collin County as well, so they're not limited to Dallas County. Um, and I will say that City Square and Legal Aid and UNT are focused on the Dallas County area. Legal Aid has more branches in Tarrant County and Collin County. And then the, they have different rural counties uh, branches as well. But this information here is for the branches in Dallas County. Feel free to take a picture of this, of this information. And if you would like a handout with all this information, I can also email it to you. And my, inform my contact information is at the, will be at the end of this presentation. I've also included legal aid for survivors of sexual assault, which I call LASA. And they are statewide. They are free legal services. They have um, a team of attorneys that can help you with if there was some kind of um, assault during school or your job, or if you need immigration services or family law services, whatever that legal need is, they have a good team of attorneys. The, they provide free legal services for victims and the number to call is right there on the screen. They'll do your intake over the phone. They'll see if you, if you qualify, and then, um, and then they'll be able to talk, you'll be able to talk to an attorney after that. I also included the Texas Advocacy Project. The Texas Advocacy Project is volunteer attorneys that are able to give you legal advice over the phone and they also help clients that don't have an attorney. So if you're pro se, which means that you're representing yourself in a legal case, then they also help guide you through that process. Sometimes they can provide documents for you or they can help you fill out documents that you might not know how to fill out because you're pro se. And so they're able to provide that service for you. If you call that number, you can get signed up for pro se assistance or you can just get legal advice from a legal attorney. So this is um, a legal hotline is what I call it, but it's free legal services and they're, they operate during normal business hours and you can call that number and you can speak to a volunteer attorney. Our next category is immigration law. I have here included Catholic Charities. Catholic Charities is a nonprofit in Dallas. They have immigration legal services for victims and for clients. Um, they also have provided appointments for our client, for Genesis clients, the first and fourth Thursday of the month. If that's, 
if you would like to talk to them or meet with them, um, please let your advocate know, please let me know or Brenda know, and we're able to refer you to them and schedule you to meet with them. Um, there are also free services when you do your intake. Right now, because of COVID, they're doing the intakes over the phone, but we'll still schedule you for an appointment with them. That, that's their contact information. That's their main phone number. If you'd like to contact them directly, you also can do that. I've also included here the Human Rights Initiative Program. It's, it's a nonprofit that helps victims of violence. And they are also a team of volunteer attorneys here in Dallas area. And you can call that number. And once you call them, they'll um, ask you some questions to see if you qualify and see, um, and see if you have like a legal case going. And then from there, they'll, um, they'll have you meet with an attorney. But sometimes, unfortunately, they don't have enough attorneys to staff all the cases. So they also have like a waiting list or they will, they will ask you to call back at a different time or the next month once they have more attorneys or to help with those cases. Um, the good thing is that it's free of charge. So that, that's a good thing. And we also have had clients that have helped, that have gone there and they've been helped by them. So I've got good feedback from them about them. And then I also have the Mosaic Family Services since they have an immigration attorney, um, but it's the same process. You have to speak to a caseworker, and then from there, they will refer you to the immig immigration attorney. Mil Mujeres is a, it's a nonprofit organization that also helps with immigration services, and their phone number is right there on the screen. It's a national organization, so their phone number is a Washington DC phone number, but they have an office here in Dallas and they are also free services. And I have another nonprofit that our clients shared with us. Um, it's called Raices, and they are also a nonprofit that helps with immigration services. They do have low cost they have a cost to their services, it's a very low cost, but um, first time co consultations are $45, and um, that's their phone number if you'd like to contact them. Now I'm gonna talk about protective orders. So protective orders, some of you might already have one, or maybe you have heard it talked about when you're with your counselor or, the police or something like that. Um, so I wanna kind of go over what a protective order is. Um, there are different offices in every county or in every county to get a protective order and they operate differently. So um, you're gonna notice, you know, if you're in a different county, it might be a little bit different for you. However, the protective order works the same way statewide. So the protective order is, to, it's for the abuser to stay 500 feet from where you live or from where you work. And the abuser is instructed not to um, perpetrate any more violence against you or threaten you or harass or stalk you. The protective order can order the, abu the abuser to go to some kind of counseling or um, some kind of, a, for abusive behavior. Um, usually the protective order is for two years. Um, and here in Dallas County, you do have to apply through the Dallas District Attorney's Office. And they have um, a screening process, which is about two pages. And they'll ask you for any events of violence, any events of threats um, or th like current threats that have been made to you. They also look at any violence in the last 90 days and they look at danger. So if there was a threat three years ago and you apply for a protective order or something, um, it might not seem as a danger. So those kinds of things, those kinds of questions 
are going to be asked when you apply for a protective order. Um, if that's something that you need, I definitely encourage you to apply for that and organize, organize a list of events if you do have them of what has happened and how to apply. And once you meet with, a, with an advocate for the district attorney's office, you'll have that all organized and ready to um, share that with them. That way you can apply for that. When you apply for it, they are going to set a court date. That's two weeks after your application. And the person that perpetrated the violence or the abuser, they will also be served. So they will get noticed that you apply for a protective order they have a right to an attorney and they have the right to show up and defend themselves if they don't have an attorney. Um, if they do not show up to the court hearing, then you will get a protective order automatically. Um, I will say that during this process, um, I would increase in safety planning because whenever a perpetrator gets served, it can be triggering for them and uh, they might want to retaliate if they're not afraid of the um, the police or something like that. Um, so I would just, you know, encourage you to safety plan with your counselor or with your advocate and kind of take precautions if you're not safe staying at home because you think that person is going to retaliate, then being very careful during that time. Um, when you have to go to the court hearing, they have a separate waiting room for you. So that's really good. So you don't have to wait with them for the court hearing. So I would just kind of keep in mind um, different safety concerns for the protective order, as well as the protective order is a court order, but um, unfortunately not everyone follows the court order or the protective order. And sometimes you have abusers that still violate it. They'll still try to harass you or try to perpetrate violence and so that can be a dangerous situation for our clients so I would just recommend you know continuing to safety plan as much as you can um, for your own safety and being cautious about that um, if you have a protective order and you see that they're still harassing you or threatening you you know call the police and report it um, report it to the district attorney's office so that can be on their record and all of that um, because that shows that he's very dangerous and he's not respecting the order. Um, and then um, they can make a police report about that. So I have here um, the district attorney's office, that's their phone number. It's on the 10th floor. Because of COVID, they're doing all of the screening over the phone. So before it was in person, they had walk-in hours, but now they have over the phone um, protective order screenings and they'll follow up with you over the phone. Um, they have also put a hold on the court hearings for protective orders. So you will get a temporary one when you apply for the protective order and that will last until, they, they, they will explain that to you, but um, I will talk to the district attorney's office of how long temporary, the temporary one will last for you um, because you'll have, the court hearings are currently on hold for protective orders. If you, um, if you are applying for a protective order because during a divorce, case or during a custody case, then the process might look a little different for you, but the district attorney's office is the best one to ask about that for. So I've also included the Cowlin County District Attorney's Office. Their phone number is on the screen and you can call them and do the application. They'll email you an application and their extension is on there as well. It looks a little bit different. Um, and then different counties are taking different precautions. Um, I also have Tarrant County. Tarrant County also has um, a 
online application where you can do that and send it back to them. And their phone number is on the screen. I also have Rockwall County. Rockwall County is partnered with a nonprofit domestic violence organization. It's called Women in Need Organization. And they are the ones that help victims apply for the protective order and they, they are partnered with the district attorney's office of Rockwall. I also have Denton County. And to get an application for Denton County, you can email that information that's on the screen, which is Kim Garrett at dentoncounty.com. And their phone number is on the screen as well. And I understand they're also taking precautions because of COVID. Um, so I would just be mindful of that before driving there. Um, you can call them, you can email them and ask for the application before having to go there and um, avoiding you know, a drive there and being more safe and all of that. Um, there are other county or the other surrounding counties and I have their information as well. These are just some of the more common ones for our clients. So if you have any questions and the information is not here, please feel free to contact me or email me and I can send that information to you. So here I have listed other legal resources in Dallas County. I've included the information for the Attorney General's office. This is the main child support office. You don't necessarily need an attorney to apply for child support. You can apply for child support on your own. The child support paperwork will ask you, has there been domestic violence? Is there safety concerns? And this is for your safety. And once you do that, they'll ask you, you know, would you, because usually they have conference meetings with you and the child, the child support office staff. And once you click that there is safety concerns and they will try to have the meetings separately. And if they, if the office determines that your case might be um, more sensitive for them to have at the Office of Attorney Generals, then they might schedule a court hearing for you and that might require you to get an attorney to help you. But this is your information and this is a website to locate an office near you. In addition, you can apply for child support online. So that's easier, you don't have to go in person and you can just fill out the paperwork online. There's also information on what documents you need before starting and it's gonna ask you for your children's information, the child's father's information, your information, like income information, those kinds of things. But this is a website to access that application. I also included the CPS Family Helpline. And this is a phone number, it's a statewide number, and you can call and talk to a CPS attorney. And they're able to answer legal questions for you. The good, the, the phone number is anonymous, so when you call, they're not, it's not gonna affect your CPS case. They're not gonna charge you, it's not gonna change anything, but you will get legal advice for your CPS case. Um, and they can also connect you to CPS attorneys. So the office is open from Monday through Friday, nine to 6 p.m. And it's a statewide number. If you want a referral to a private attorney, I've also included the Dallas Bar Association. So you can call them and they have referrals to private attorneys in your area. They can also give you a half an hour consultation. They do charge $20 for that, um, but they're able to provide that to you. You just have to call the number and then they can also give you referrals to private attorneys, which means they'll probably charge you um, like a private attorney in Dallas. Every city has like a bar association. So Tarrant County has their bar association. So this is just for Dallas. The Equal Justice Center is um, employed, it's a nonprofit that helps with employee rights and they do provide free legal assistance. If there is any kind of discrimination in your job because of the violence, domestic violence, and you think they just, and they discriminated against you and you would like to file 
a lawsuit against them because they terminated you unfairly. Or, you know, if it was a coworker harassing you or something like that, um, or sexual assault during your job, anything that has to do with your employer, uh, they are able to provide you information on, you know, is there a legal case that you can open? And if that's something you want to pursue, um, the good thing is that the services are free. And so um, that's the number to call for that. I've also included texaslawhelp.org. This is a statewide website. And this is for, um, for the most part, it's for people that are pro se. That means that they're representing themselves in a court hearing. So they have instructions, they have the documents to print out that you can fill out on your own. And it also kind of gives you step-by-step -step guide on what to do with those forms. So if you want to file for divorce and you're having a hard time finding an attorney, those kinds of things, you can go on there and print those documents out and it tells you what to do, it tells you to fill it out, get it notarized, you know, file it in your courthouse, take a copy, take it to the opposing party, those kinds of things. It tells you step by step what to do. Um, and also, there is a legal library at the George Allen Courthouse. And what they do is they print off these documents for you. They charge like a dollar a page for the documents. But what they're basically doing is printing off documents from texaslawhelp.org. So if it's easier, you know, for you to just do it on your own at home, then this is a website to do it. It also talks about custody, um, like how to file for custody or um, divorce or things, those kinds of things that are like legal issues that helps you with that. Um, and if you're able to complete it and do it on your own, that's, that's a place to go for you to, for, to help you. Um, the George Allen Courthouse is not really open to the public. Um, I just want to say that, but they do, um, we still have this website, the texaslawhelp.org, that might be able to help you. I've also included womenslaw.org. Womenslaw.org is also for pro se clients that are representing themselves. But what it does, it breaks down women's rights in different states. Um, mainly for victims of domestic violence. So it talks about custody in Arizona or custody in Colorado, as well as protective orders in Colorado versus Texas. Um, and so they're all kind of, you know, state by state varies, um, especially for clients that have moved or if they're thinking about moving. Womenslaw.org breaks it, breaks it down by state and it's a nationwide website. And sometimes I also have clients, the Legal Resource Center on Violence Against Women is for clients that either have moved to a different state or are here from a different state and they're dealing with a case that is basically bouncing back from two states and sometimes that happens. So this nonprofit is to get you connected with attorneys that are um, prepared to be able to represent you in two states. Um, so the phone number is on there, the hotline is there as well, and it is mainly for victims of domestic violence. So they're not here in Texas, but they are um, specialized in helping you find representation because of the different states um, conflicting laws and those kinds of things and um, licensing and those kinds of things for attorneys. So the information is on the screen and again all this information is in a handout. If you'd like for me to give this handout to you, I can email it to you and my contact information is going to be at the end of this presentation. Um, so feel free to email me and you know just request 
the legal resource handout and I can email it back to you. Please keep in mind that because of COVID, these agencies are not really open to the public, um, but they are still operating. They're still open, but they're operating with different precautions as far as in-face meetings and um, those kinds of things, as well as the courthouses. So different courts, um, like I said, the protective orders, they're, they're not having protective order courts right now. You can still apply for it, but they're, the hearing is just, they're on hold right now. And the family law hearings, um, it's gonna vary by judge. For the most part, from my understanding, is that they're all doing Zoom call hearings. So virtually, you're able to talk to the judge and your attorney is able to represent you to the Zoom call, which is very different from what we've ever seen. Um, but we're still able to have that, which is good because um, having these legal cases on hold can be stressful. If you have any questions in addition to this, I know this is so much information for us to share with you, but if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to contact me. And again, because this is only in Dallas County, you might have a different need for a different county. Feel free to contact me um, through my email, through my phone number, and I will get back to you with that information. Um, and before um, I wrap up here, I do want to talk about the importance of safety planning. Um, I know that starting a legal case or having a legal case open can be very stressful. There are times that you might have to testify um, about the violence um, and, and maybe facing the perpetrator can be, you know, very intimidating. And so I do want to kind of encourage you um, to, you know, go to the counseling groups uh, because of the increase of stress because of the legal cases and the court hearings are sometimes very short and you might not be able to talk about everything that you want to talk about during the court hearings or um, not be heard during these court hearings so it can be a little frustrating um, and so just kind of thinking about that and preparing that if you have a court hearing coming up definitely you know I encourage you to increase in your self-care and trying to, um, you know, control the anxiety and those kinds of things um, before going into a court hearing because it can be intimidating and stressful. Um, but not only that, as well as because maybe you opened a divorce case or maybe you applied for a protective order, um, the other, the abuser might retaliate or they might want to um, get back to you, get back at you during this court process. And so just being careful about that, um, increasing your safety. If you think that this person's going to retaliate or making threats, um, and just kind of being careful about that, if it triggers abuser. Um, and in addition to that, because the family case, the family cases includes custody exchange, and it includes co-parenting and all of that, I would also encourage you to talk to your attorney about different safety measures that you can take during the court process, but also after the court process. Are there any safety measures that you can include to protect yourself from the abuser? If that means not having to go to their house and pick up the kids, if that means that I'm not coming to your house to pick up the kids because it's not safe. They might harass you when they come over or, or when you go over and it might not be a safe situation for you and your children. And so these kind of measures can be included in your legal orders. So I definitely always encourage all my clients to really you know, voice any safety concerns to their attorney to be very transparent. You know, these are safety concerns that I have. This is what has happened in the past. And advocate for yourself during this process um, because the legal orders are more um, long-term for the most part, especially if your child is three years old and you might have to co-parent with this um, person until they're 18 and so including those safety measures in the legal order is 
you know, for your protection, not just physically, but emotionally, psychologically, um, and, and protecting yourself as much as possible. Of course, it's not going to do away with any kind of abuse that has happened or anything like that, but it might help prevent something in the future. Um, if you have any other questions with this, I'm happy to safety plan with you, um, brainstorm with you on what you can do. There's also different apps that have been created for um, situations like this. So there's one called the Family Wizard, and that's a court-monitored app. And that is for family cases only. So if you have to communicate with the abuser, but he, that person is constantly threatening you or being violent through text, this app was created for that. So that you can have all communication through there and the court monitors it. And the purpose is you know, to prevent any more violence or any threats or harassment through communication because of co-parenting. And so that's one of the apps that our clients use and that the court uses as well. So I would also keep that in mind when talking to your attorneys if they've never heard of it, you know, tell them about it if that's a possibility and if it helps you, you know, to feel safer and be safe, as well as um, supervised visitation. So if you think that your child's father is dangerous to your children and your children are not safe with them. You know, talking to your attorney about supervised visitation, um, is it, and if that's something that you can obtain and if they can help you obtain that. So those are some suggestions and some tips for you to keep in mind when talking to your attorney and really advocating for your situation, for your case, because every case is different and every case has different needs. Um, but we always prioritize safety. And so I wanna let you know about that as well, that um, advocate for your safety with your attorney. We understand that you don't have any control of the situation, but um, we would like to encourage you about that. So the other, um,